In today's video, I'll walk you through a bunch of different setups for connecting your Raspberry Pi with your tablet or your smartphone. I've been using my iPad Pro together with a Raspberry Pi 4 as a mobile computing setup for around about two years now. In my setup, the Pi and iPad are connected using a single USB-C cable, allowing them to talk to each other and providing the Pi with power from the iPad. If you'd like to see more about that setup and what I use it for, I have a video going into detail on that here. Now this is a great setup for iOS users in particular because it allows you to carry a fully fledged Linux setup with you, alleviating the need to rely on connectivity back to your home office or to the cloud. If you already have a tablet, I also think that this is a great way to start learning about Linux and about the Raspberry Pi without having to invest in a ton of new hardware. We're going to look at a bunch of different configurations in today's videos, and I've put timestamps in the description for each of these sections. We'll start with a simple one cable setup for the Pi 4 that works with USB-C iPads, and we'll expand that solution, adding various options for powering those two devices. We'll expand even further to look at lightning-based devices like the iPhone and older iPads, and then we'll go a step further to look at a really nice USB tethering solution that works on Android, that works on some iOS devices, and that supports older Pis like the Pi 3. And then finally, we'll look at a pure ethernet based solution that is a great fallback for other single board computers when none of these setups will work for you and your devices. Let's get started with the simplest possible wired setup, a single USB-C cable connecting a USB-C iPad and the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm using the Gen 5 iPad Air here, but as of the time of filming, this setup works with any of the USB-C capable iPads. Connectivity between the iPad and the Pi is Ethernet over the USB-C cable, and power is also delivered from the iPad to the Pi on that same USB-C cable. And this is where the first limitation of this setup arises. There's no way to power the iPad at the same time as powering the Pi. One way of addressing this is to introduce the Apple Magic Keyboard. With the Magic Keyboard in the mix, you get an extra USB-C port for powering the iPad and the Pi at the same time, and you can still use the iPad's primary port for connectivity between the two devices. Now this is the setup that I use, and I do think it's the cleanest setup, but it is expensive. The price of the Magic Keyboard always discomforts me, and if I didn't use it so often, I would absolutely look for a cheaper option for this setup the best of which is to use a USB-C hub. Pretty much any USB-C hub that accepts power input will do here. I bought this Anker 7-in-1 hub with my own money, not sponsored, which has USB-C power in and a USB-C data port. The hub gets plugged into the iPad, power gets plugged into the hub, and then the Pi is plugged into the, the hub's USB-C data port. If you're working with a setup like this and you're having issues, make sure that you're plugging the hub's captive cable into the iPad and not into the Pi. USB-C hubs or USB hubs are directional and one port is designated for the host with the rest being for downstream peripherals or power input. If your USB-C hub doesn't have a captive cable, it will likely have a port explicitly labeled for the host. This is a nice setup to avoid having to buy a magic keyboard and you get the added benefits of all the ports on the hub. If you already have a USB-C hub, but it's one without a USB-C data port, don't worry, you can use a USB-A to USB-C cable on your hub's USB-A ports to connect the Pi without any problems at all. It's worth taking a minute just to understand how this setup is working. By default, both the iPad and the Raspberry Pi want to be USB hosts. That is that they want to have USB peripherals like hard drives and webcams plugged into them. In this setup though, the iPad remains as a USB host, but the Pi is configured to act as a USB peripheral. Specifically, it's configured to act as a USB Ethernet adapter. This is enabled by a technology called USB OTG or USB on the go. The Pi 4 only supports OTG on its USB-C port, which is quite handy because we can then get connectivity and power through that single port. As we'll see though, other single board computers like the Raspberry Pi 3 don't support OTG at all and will need a different solution. You do need a little extra configuration in your OS to enable OTG on the Pi 4. I'm not going to discuss that here, because I have a bunch of videos and guides on my website discussing the various configuration options for the various different Linux distributions, and I've linked all those below. As we've seen, it's easy to connect a USB-C iPad to the Pi 4, and we have plenty of options for power, but what about iPads with lightning ports? What about the iPhone? Although it's not possible to get by with just a lightning to USB-C cable, 
it is possible to connect the Pi 4 and a Lightning-based iOS device with just a few pieces of equipment. First up, you will need a Lightning USB to OTG adapter. Apple has a few first-party options, often referred to as being a camera kit or a camera adapter. For example, I have this official Apple USB 3 camera adapter that works really well. And I've also had some success with cheaper third-party adapters, and I'll link a few in the description below. Lightning devices don't provide enough power for the Pi 4, so you'll also need a powered hub, which can be either USB-A hub or a USB-C hub. Start by connecting the OTG adapter to your Lightning device. I'm using my iPhone here. Next up, plug your hub into the OTG adapter, remembering to power the hub. From there, connect the USB-C port from the Pi to the hub. It's absolutely fine to use a USB-C to USB-A cable here if your hub only has USB-A ports. If you're looking for a hub for this setup, I picked up this cheap Ugreen hub for testing purposes, and it works just fine, even if it does feel a little bit plasticky. Most of the Lightning OTG adapters I've seen take USB-A input, not USB-C input. So if you have a USB-C hub with a captive host cable, you'll need an adapter. And I picked up this cheap adapter on Amazon that has worked well for me. So this setup is a little messier than the one for the USB-C iOS devices, but it does work just as well. And it's much cheaper than upgrading to a USB-C iPad just to try this out. I want to note at this point that the Pi doesn't share the internet connection from the iOS device in any of the setups that we've seen so far. You'll need to connect the Pi to Wi-Fi separately. This can be the hotspot on your cell phone or on your cellular iPad if you have one, but this does not happen automatically. This video is brought to you by the Techcraft Patreon. All patrons get access to the private Techcraft Discord, exclusive behind the scenes content, early access to every video and input on future videos. Patrons on the channel Champion tier get access to a monthly video hangout and an exclusive monthly deep dive tutorial. This month's tutorial is a step-by-step -step guide to automatically building your own Raspberry Pi images. Link to the Patreon in the description below. Let's now turn our attention to Android devices and I want to start with two disclaimers. First up, Android devices are way more varied than iOS devices, so I can only provide broad guidance to what should work. Second, I only have one Android device myself and I've only had it a few months, so it's possible there are other connection options here and if you know of any such options, please do share them in the comments below. I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Tab SA Ultra for my setup and this device powers the Pi 4 just fine from the USB-C port, but I've had limited success getting the single cable USB OTG setup to work. My SA seems to get confused about which device is the host, which is the peripheral, I don't want to say that this definitively doesn't work, um, but I can't get it to work reliably. That's okay though, because there's another solution for Android, one that I think is particularly attractive. In this solution, we're going to flip the USB rolls around. We'll make the Pi the host and have the Android device be the peripheral. To do this, you'll want to run your Pi with the stock OS configuration and not with the OTG peripheral configuration needed by the previous setups. Power up the Pi and then connect any of the USB-A ports not the USB-C port this time, to your Android device. The SA Ultra has a USB-C port, so I'm gonna use a USB-A to USB-C connector. Then in your Android device, enable USB tethering, and after a second or two, your Android will configure itself to act as a virtual ethernet adapter, and you're free to connect to the Pi. However, you don't yet know the IP address of the Pi, and you can't use the Pi's host name because most Android systems don't support zero conf networking out of the box. Not to worry though, we can solve this using the excellent Termux app. In Termux, which you will probably need to install using F-Droid these days, install the Nmap package with PKG install Nmap, and then let's do a port scan like we're in Mr. Robot. To find out what to scan, let's first find out the address of the Android device itself using the ifconfig command. And for my USB zero interface, you can see that I have an address starting with 192.168.175, so I'll run nmap with dash p22 to scan port 22, dash dash open to look for open ports, and then 192.168.175.0 slash 24 to scan all of the addresses between 192.168.1751 and 192.168.175.255. So basically try to find what address has been assigned to the Pi. After a few seconds, you'll see the results complete with the IP address of your Pi, and then you're free to log in over SSH. Now, the best part of this setup is that the Pi can share the internet connection from the Android device. 
So if we disable the Wi-Fi connection on the Pi, we can use sudo ifconfig wlan0 down to disable the wlan0 adapter, we can still access the internet from the Pi. Another benefit of using USB tethering this way is that it also works on the Pi 3 and probably works on older Pis too. I just don't have any working devices that I can test on. This setup may even work well on non-Pi single board computers. The only downside of this setup is that the Pi is now powering the Android device over its basic USB-A port. And for a tablet like the S8 Ultra, this is just simply not enough power. And I found that my S8 seems to slowly discharge over time in this setup. But you can always experiment with putting a powered hub in line if you want to get more power. Although I will say I've had mixed results with this setup. The same USB tethering solution that works so well on Android also works on the iPhone and on cellular iPads. Sadly, there's no USB tethering support on Wi-Fi only iPads. I have no idea why. Only three steps are needed. Firstly, you need to install the USB Mux D package on your Raspberry Pi, which you can do with sudo apt install USB Mux D on the standard Raspberry Pi OS. Next, connect the USB A port on your Raspberry Pi to your iOS device. And this time you can use a standard USB to lightning cable. You don't need any special OTG adapters here. When you connect, you'll be prompted to trust the device. So click yes to trust. And then finally in iOS settings, make sure that you enable your personal hotspot. Now you're free to connect to the Pi from your iOS device. And as with the Android setup, we can disable the Wi-Fi on the Pi and share the cellular connection from the iPad or the iPhone. I think that the tethering solution is the best approach for older Pies and also the best approach for cell phones since the Pi can satisfy their power draw and can share the internet connection. Obviously for tablets, you won't be able to satisfy the power draw, so you might want to look to the solutions at the start of the video. If none of the solutions so far fit your phone, fit your tablet, fit your single board computer, then you can likely fall back on using a standard ethernet cable to connect the devices. For this setup, you'll need some kind of USB ethernet adapter for your tablet or your smartphone. This can be a dedicated adapter, it can be a USB hub with a dedicated adapter, or it can be a USB hub that has an ethernet built in already. So for example, I've got my iPad Air here, and I've connected my wife's USB-C hub, which is an, a three or four year old hyperdrive model that does happen to have an, an ethernet port built in. I can connect this port to the ethernet on my Pi using a standard ethernet cable here, and then power the Pi using a USB cable from one of the hub's USB ports. Straight out of the box with stock Raspberry Pi OS, the Pi is accessible over SSH. There's no changes needed, so you don't need the OTG configuration here. There's nothing special about this setup. There's nothing specific to the Pi, so it works with the Pi 4 as well, and it should also work with pretty much any single board computer that runs Linux and has an Ethernet adapter. You may need some configuration though to get things like hostname resolution working. In summary then, we've seen a bunch of different solutions for connecting tablets and smartphones with single board computers like the Raspberry Pi. I'm sure at least one of the solutions shown in this video will work for you and for your devices, and I hope that you enjoyed trying them out. I also hope that you found this video useful and maybe even a little entertaining. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and maybe hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.